Welcome to the April 6, 2017 episode of Reactive Consciousness, our in-depth podcast about what happened this week in pop culture. I am your host, Vaz the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince still in the house? Yeah, I'm Pyro Jack Frost. Yeah. <laughs> also in the house. It's miraculous. Two days later, they're still here. <laughs> Somebody the, help me. The uh, the only thing I have that was better to do. The only thing uh, that that's good after three days or is is not guests or fish. <laughs> anyway, uh, so our our first uh, segment, uh, we're gonna move on to uh, what Lotus uh, wanted to uh, talk about this week. Uh, you have uh, quite a uh, a couple things here. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, quite a couple. Quite a couple. Quite a couple. <laughs> quite a couple. So it was really interesting. Um, um, this uh, this past Saturday was April first, so you know April Fool's Day. But something really interesting happened. Uh, there's the uh, the popular anime Attack on Titan season one ended. How many years ago now? Like I've two? never watched it. I've read a little bit of the manga, but I haven't actually watched the season one. Show. Ended like I think the cartoon. T- that's what it is. I mean, <laughs> season one ended like two, possibly even more. I forgot years ago. It's been a while. And so, season two, it's like, when's season two going to happen? You know, same time Half-Life 3 happens. It's We're making it, I guess, maybe. But it actually, uh, the first episode actually aired on See, Saturday. I think that's an interesting comparison because the fact that Valve has never mentioned they're making a Half-Life 3. Oh, People have enough. assumed that. Whereas, Attack on Titan 2 makes more sense because of the manga. Well, episode 1 ended in a horrible well, cliffhanger, though. Te- technically, yeah, I was going to say uh, Half-Life 2, Episode 2, episode it was supposed end. to be a trilogy. Mm. So he, they technically were going to make an Episode so 3. So that's more of the joke than... Well, even so, it's not yeah. here. But anyway, but Season 2, Episode 1 of Attack on Titan actually aired on Saturday. It sounds like an April Fool's joke, but it's not. Remember that in Japan, it's uh, April 2nd by that point. So it just airs on their Sundays, our Saturdays. I couldn't believe it. I saw people on Twitter like, oh, I watched Attack on Titan Season 2. Ha, ha, ha. But no, they did, and then I did. And it's yeah, I'll just say this as was, emotionally traumatic as ever. This was one of the more mellow April Fools, I believe. Yeah. Not I haven't seen many things for April Fools. There were most, some pretty good April Fools jokes. Most some. most of the April Fools jokes I've seen are like obvious jokes, yeah. which are the uh, the kind that I'm okay with, you know, yeah, like Yeah, not actually duping somebody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, one of the ones I saw was uh like Stone Age Gamer uh, Oh, you a, saw that one. is a a really cool uh distributor of the Ever Drives and other flash cartridges uh they make like really nice deluxe versions of a lot of flash cartridges for for uh, all kinds of retro game systems and i I really like the versions that they put out because they look nice uh but a a lot of a lot of flash cartridges are kind of just utilitarian they they give you just a board or something like that Uh, and they they really fix it up and make it look really nice but uh they said that they're they're coming out with a a a uh, an NES EverDrive like special edition <laughs> that is like 24 karat gold and also has like diamonds in it because it wasn't sparkly enough. Uh, and you could pre-order it on April second uh, for I think it was like, it was like fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand dollars. They also said that one of the benefits of 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 owning it is that it's still cheaper than a gold competition. Um, uh, uh, oh, the world, cha- world championship, oh, world championship okay. card, funny. Uh, which is pr- pretty funny, and it's real gold. <laughs> I, I also like. I also, by the way, like. I don't, I don't know if this was intention necessarily intentional, but part of the subtlety of the joke is that twenty four karat gold is freaking stupid to have on hardware that you have to like put into a machine. Mm-hmm. It's twenty four karat gold is very malleable. Like you can, I mean, that's how they checked if gold coins were legit like in the old west they would bite them if you can bite them and leave teeth marks then it was real yeah yeah 14 karat gold is much better for everyday usage let's just put it that that way that's why yeah that's why like wedding rings are 14 karat gold so you don't warp the ring with your own finger um so that was pretty funny but yeah attack on titan was not an april fool's gag and it actually picks up right where season one left off where you see the titan in the wall and people are like wait what 
But then it goes to a flashback and they deal with stuff before that point, so you don't really see much aftermath, but I'm sure we'll get to that soon enough. But like I said, uh, bad stuff happens and it's uncomfortable to watch and you get right back into that melancholy feeling of like, I want to watch the next episode, but <laughs> I feel like garbage the entire time I'm watching it because like, people I care about get maimed or killed and it's just every single time it's, it just keeps happening it's like a, a evangelion um movie four like when the hell is that gonna come out you know yeah mm. i mean That's it took forever to for for uh, movie three to come out and movie three didn't have a u.s release until like two or three years after that took forever after the original um uh release date of the japanese version of it so it was one of those ones where you you basically had to pirate it, like because like for, you really had no choice. Yeah, I mean, I, it's I like waited, the, it's but... like the JoJo manga for like twenty years. <laughs> it's mm. like we like that. What are you gonna do? Now they have Phantom Blood out, but like that was as of two thousand, what like fourteen or fifteen. Like until then, you better know how to read Japanese, or you better have the last. I think it was like twenty years to because I think it came out in like eighty six or eighty seven. You gotta you had to pirate it. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I kind of I I do want to watch Attack on Titan or finish reading it. I just I think when I started reading it, it was because I heard so much, so many good things about it. The first few episodes just really they just so hit you. So I wanted to um, see what it was about, and I thought it was wasn't bad, but it wasn't interesting enough at the time when I had other things to worry about. But well, maybe well, the, when I have more time, I can pick it up again. You know, the way I think about it is it it almost reminds me of Battle Royale. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I've watched both movies. Oh, I have not seen the yeah. second. But the thing with Battle Royale is, I mean, by the time I saw the movie, I had read the book a while back. Mm-hmm. But Attack on Titan and Battle Royale are kind of similar in that when you're like, oh, what's this going to be about? And you read the first three or four chapters and you're like, holy shit. But then everything after that is like, well, there's going to be more horrible violence and more misery. So, like, I'm, I'm just expecting mm. it now. The only thing that might surprise you is if, like maybe something happens to a character you didn't really think it would happen to or something but otherwise it's like well you've you've hit me with a sucker punch now now i'm ready for you so it's it's not quite as like oh what like the like for the rest of the uh, series uh by the way one more april fool's thing i want to throw out that i thought was pretty funny was um udon comics the guys who are most famous i don't know about most famous but they're quite the famous stuff right yeah for like street fighter comics and stuff like that um they released an announcement uh, as april fools that they were going to do a a comic adaptation of like and their their art style of the street fighter uh movie you know with the, the van damme one so they had like the udon art of like Ooh, that's pretty everyone amazing. in their weird movie costumes it was pretty funny uh, what did blanca look like because blanca oh, is easily the goofiest looking i one. didn't even get a good look uh-huh. but um I, I just saw the picture i'm like yeah it's funny um but one other april fool's joke i want to mention that is the best thing ever is that um the entire cartoon network evening lineup was still listed as legit on um, on the TV Guide channel. It would be Toonami uh, on Saturdays, right? I think so. It's yes. always Toonami on yeah, Saturdays. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Um, that that whole lineup on TV on the TV Guide channel was what it should be. But on the Adult Swim's streaming site, and you'll also find on TV as well, up through midnight, they only looped one thing. Finally. Episode one of season three of Rick and Morty. It blew my freaking That's mind. That's awesome. And they just great. played it over and over again. Yeah, because <laughs> you're gonna miss it. Like this is this is one of those things you have to find by like word of mouth online. Like holy shit, did you see Adult Swim site? Ah, mm. uh, go. So um, it was amazing. Um, the thing is though, part of what makes it an April Fool's gag is of course it interferes with your standard lineup. So I did have to miss Samurai Jack because you know Rick and Morty replaced it. But um, the other part of the gag is that from what I've heard, there's still gonna air the season for real like in the summer so here's your one episode see you later oh, it's like okay. uh, uh but it was it's a, fan- a teaser yeah. yeah yeah but it was a fantastic episode i don't really want to go too much into yeah you know, detail because a lot of the show is kind of I, like what happens and how like the visuals and the dialogue and everything like really everything but it was amazing i didn't know where they were going to go with the after the end of season two but oh boy <laughs> I, I started watching it a couple months ago season one and i i thought it was funny i don't i don't know if i I'm as into it as you and well. Here's Pirates the, here's are, the thing but... I do want to bring up. Season one, they set you up the premise, especially for the first few episodes. But you'll find, especially, I don't remember where one season ends and the other begins in terms of overall 
overarching plot or whatever but with later episodes you'll find it's a very intelligently written show mm. um there's there's a lot of like really legitimately clever stuff in there and they subvert tropes all the time uh, yeah i think like it's that. because the first few episodes are well the first few episodes were more like it's back to the future it's a little crazy. And, yeah. and also there's um i have started to dislike body humor like not body humor but like gross humor i get what you mean and it's in the very beginning it's very much yeah they don't mainly push that spe- yeah the first episode put this giant thing up your ass yeah. they, they don't do they, they still have it but not as like 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 it's not fart jokes although ironically there were a couple in season one but it was for the purpose oh, of okay showing how relentlessly like, immature rick was actually i watched uh two episodes of mystery science theater 3000 on netflix with my family and I think the jokes that my brother and my dad laughed at the most were the poop and the fart yeah, jokes. Yeah, yeah. There's one where like a guy is is fighting this other guy. Let's just say that. I don't want to yeah, too much too fighting, for the yeah. premise. And he he like flips to avoid the guy, and like when the guy's butt is in the other guy's face, to go. That is kind <laughs> of. Funny. I don't know why I thought that was so funny, but I just thought it was. It's hilarious. just immature. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the yeah. thing. You didn't think they would stoop that low, yeah. but it's funny that they did. I think I think that's why fart jokes are funny. Yeah. Like really, that's the well, that, lowest well, form of humor. Yeah. So when it, when people do it, it's like wow, I did not. I, I mean, that, think about what, it. This, think about it this way: before like cavemen could talk, there were yeah. still farts, and they were funny. <laughs> oh, by the way, one other th- one thing I do want to throw out from a, an episode of Rick and Morty, I think it was season two, that it's one of my favorite lines from the whole show. Um, there was an episode that really, like the whole episode was a, like a silly version of Stephen King's uh, story, Needful Things. Are you familiar with that one? No. But, well, in Stephen King's story, there's this guy who moves into town who has a pawn shop, but it always seems to have that one thing that you've always There's wanted. There's always a catch. Or you lo- no, no, no. But like, yeah. it always seems to have that one thing that you've wanted ever since you were a kid or you had and lost, but he's got it. And it's like, how do you have this? And what he wants for it is like a dirt cheap price. But yeah, you have to do something mean-spirited to your neighbor. Mm. It's not... You're not going to go out and kill anybody. It's like, I want you to stomp on Mrs. Henderson's flower bed or whatever. But what you don't realize is that that's either going to be the straw that's broke the camel's back for her or like maybe it doesn't mean a lot to you but it does to her that kind of thing so by the end of the book the whole town is literally ready to kill each other over what should be petty stuff but like everyone just hit everyone's red button without realizing it and it's just like oh my god so with with the with the rick and morty episode it wasn't that but the guy did have the pawn shop of all this really cool stuff but it would hit you with an ironic curse so like Mm. like the super microscope would do exactly what it was described as doing, but it would make you go blind or something like that. So there was one really funny part was when um, Rick, the scientist guy, was just harassing the devil who's selling this stuff because he's just like, nope, that's going to have an ironic curse. Nope, it's going to have an ironic curse. <laughs> and, the, and the devil's just getting mad. And he's like, dude, if you don't get out of here, I- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call the cops. Let me get my phone. And Rick's like, oh, no, 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 it's okay. You could use my phone. Don't worry. It won't make you deaf because I'm not a hack. Like, was like, <laughs> it was like the funniest goddamn line. I was like, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then Rick makes an entire business off of like... Yeah, of decursing of those decursing items. decursing those items specifically. So he screws the devil and makes a ton of money. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I think the, the shows that I'm like... I'm glad that Rick and Morty season three, because I know a lot of people, especially people that we know, are really looking forward to it. Yeah. But I think I think what I'm looking forward to more is the next season of Archer. Okay. I, 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 I get it. I get it. The talking about Mystery Science Theater, they're making new episodes of that. That's coming out, I think, April. Yeah, 14th. I can't believe it. That's the so noir, good. The noir version. Yeah, yeah. noir uh, Archer, and then the new Mystery Science Theater three thousand. I cannot episodes. believe that's coming back to TV. I'm so happy. It's, it's funny because when I was watching that, I I did. I do enjoy it, but some of the movies are so bad that you're falling asleep. Yeah, with not really, because with, with even the with the humor. Seasons. Well, that's the thing with the old seasons. Yeah, they went like, "What are the worst movies we could find?" Because that's the show. But like, by the later seasons, they were like, "What are some bad but at least ironically at, enjoyable yeah. movies?" At least you could watch like Mitchell, and that's like a that's like a <laughs> cheesy fun <laughs> funny movie. You know what I mean? Mitchell. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That's the movie's title. That's the guy's name. It's Mitchell. Yeah, but that's also <laughs> like a landmark episode in the series because that's when the hosts change. Yeah. First of all, and also it's just a really good episode. Joel it's really funny. Box marked ham dingers. I don't <laughs> even know what that means. <laughs> oh, by the way, just even though this is backtracking, there is one more thing I want to throw out about that devil episode of Rick and Morty that also just cracked me up because Morty's sister was kind of in on it because the devil was <laughs> I like love the, a the, nice host. The very end of that episode is yeah, really the crap But the one part that really made me laugh was when she realized he was screwing her over too. And he's like, I can't believe you do this to me. And he's like, 
like, you would do that to even me? And he's like, of course I would. I'm the devil. But the part that got me was he immediately jumps up on the counter, whips out a fiddle, and starts playing. I'm like, yes! <laughs> it's just like, like, what the hell is this? It was hysterical. I love stuff like that. Just like, he's old school, like, southern United States devil. Like, yeah, all, yeah, all he's right. the one that went down to Georgia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Played Johnny in a fiddle competition. Oh my god, it's so good. Um, but but yeah, yeah, those are the main things I wanted to bring up. Attack on Titan, for real. And Rick and Morty as a teaser, for but real. as an April Fool's joke. It, yeah. it was for real as a joke, and Attack on Titan was not even a joke. It just coincidentally aired in what was considered April Fool's on the West. Like, of all times, for the show that's been gone for freaking ever. Oh, it's back on April Fool's. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So yeah, the, the, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was, now that we've, we're doing this live podcast, the other great thing about visiting um, Vice was we got to play on his Switch because I don't own one and Lotus yeah, do doesn't own, own one. one. No. Um, I kind of wish we had time to play the PlayStation VR, but that's for another another time, another live yeah, podcast. But sure. So I actually got to try it and we played some really fun games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I did show you guys a, like a half second of Skyward Sword while, mm-hmm. because I was playing it when you guys came in, but yeah. uh, then we we moved on to one to Switch. Did you like say Skyward Sword? Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Breath of the Wild. Jeez. Uh, Breath, of Wa- Breath of the Wild. But, um, Good catch. I missed I, that. I, I was dying in the game at the time <laughs> <laughs> because I had just fought like a gigantic sn- uh, sandworm. But um, I had beaten it though, so. Ah. Yay. But the uh, jokes on that. Yeah. <laughs> he who controls the spice controls the universe. But uh I walked without rhythm, so <laughs> Yes. But uh yeah, we, we, we played one two switch and I had never played it because that's not mm. a game I, I want to play by but, myself. And you can't I don't think you really can play it by yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. So uh it, it's a it's a mini game compilation, just kinda like WarioWare, um, but Nintendo really knows how to make a mini yeah. game compilation. It's so much fun. Um, there's like a lot of uh, FMV like introductions to every game. The best. They're so, really great. I I heard when I was hearing about this game, one thing I heard about it, like a negative comment, let's say, is that it's the mini games like are they're they're good, but they're not something you play a lot. But the thing is about that game is I think about it. We're the same supposed way. to wait until friends come over. But I think about exactly. it as, that plus I think about it the same way as like Wii Sports and yeah. Yeah. that sort of game. Yeah, where are you really gonna play bowling all day? I like, played eh. those games with my fam- my parents. Yeah, mm-hmm. like these are games that I could see my parents jump, jumping in on sure. and like playing with family and over. And the commercials push or... that angle too. My mom would yeah. play these games. Yeah. I mean, like like the soda pop one. She would have a lot of fun. Yeah. Or even as like an icebreaker type thing when you have friends over that they don't know what to do. It's like let's just put switch on so we're having fun and then we can throw something else on mm-hmm. i mean th- this is a game that you you buy when you buy a system and you want to show it off to your friends you can show them how how much fun the features of the system can be yeah how functional the controllers mm-hmm. are like the, the, the things you didn't realize you could do with them it's very much like i think you already mentioned warioware like with warioware it's like hold the controller sideways hold it vertically uh use the nunchuck this time with uh with one two switch it's kind of like that but you can there are gimmicks where you rotate the stick or where you like aim it like a gun or where you rotate it um like to crack a safe or like even the vibration comes in handy where like um there's a mini game where there are a certain amount of the little balls, little in, balls a, in, in this box how yeah, many yeah. are in there so you tilt it and hear them quote bounce around well not even that vibration. be tilt it like just enough because that one thing that they're pushing for the switch is that the vibration is like ultra sensitive it works and yeah. When you t- when you tilt the box, you can feel when the balls hit the side. Yeah. So if you tilt too much at once, you can only feel one ball because they're all going to hit the side. But if you tilt just enough, you can feel one ball and then another ball hit that ball. Yeah. And you can actually, it's really cool. And by the way, speaking of ultra sensitive, um, like vibration functions on this controller, um, I don't remember about other systems. I, I don't really pay much attention to the vibrations on those. But from what I remember, I think like they don't vibrate or they do but this has different levels of vibration like there's definitely like mm-hmm. subtle and like much harder ones it's when lots you've got and there's different parts different. of it are, can vibrate too which is really cool like they, yeah and they each have different levels of vibration mm-hmm. yeah yeah and I, I think even different parts of the controller vibrate too mm-hmm. yeah which is it, it's very immersive uh very i think there's also some uh i, I think it, it's even better when you have a game where you're playing uh the the system in portable mode and the joy cons are on the on the actual tablet um like it can be really um like like because of all the different sensors and different vibration points in the controllers on the sides it can give a really nice immersive experience yeah like usually when you have a controller let's say a playstation controller it's really only the the uh grips 
that yeah. vibrate or the handles. Yeah, and that's the only part that you would be dealing and that's with. It. Anyway. So they might yeah. vibrate different times, whatever. But that's all you can feel. But with I guess the switch, thinking about that, like the top can vibrate, the yeah, bottom, the different nuts. sides. So you get a more more feeling of what's actually going on. And I think another thing that people complain about, and my complaint about switches, I do think it should have been a pack in. But it been. more yeah. so than let's say Nintendo World is this is very very like you can get anyone into this because mm-hmm. the the it's hard the the amount of entry into Nintendo World is harder because it's very much Nintendo based like if you don't know any of the Nintendo games it's hard to get people well, interested actually that's something I was going to bring up is that Nintendo uh, One Two Switch is very good at introducing you to the concept of mm-hmm. the Switch but even that it's 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 not it's the fact that. There's you don't need to know any game knowledge to go in because yeah, all the game. activities, just like like Wii Sports, are real life activities that you're mm-hmm. doing. That so people get a basic idea. Like I, I had I know basically what safe cracking is about, so I know I need to turn it and just yeah. hear the vibration. Or and I know what how samurai swing, their, swing their sword, their sword. so I have a general idea what's going on. And even on. if you don't, they show you anyway with a full-on video. Yeah. And by the way, one thing I really liked, it's not my favorite game, but I think it's my favorite idea for the game, is um, if not the balls in the box, then I, I want to say table tennis, because mm. that one's really creative, because you're supposed to swing your controller, like just with your hand as though you were swinging a paddle, and you'll feel the vibration when you would hit the ball. But what's interesting is that you hear like you're you're like the game actively tells you for these mini games not to look at the screen. You're not mm-hmm. supposed you're supposed to look at the other player. So you don't even need the screen for this. The screen is for like whoever else is watching. But there is no ball. There is no net. You're just swinging your hands at each other. But you feel a vibration when you hit the ball. The other player hears the bounce, swings back. It works better than it has a right to. Yeah, like it's you really can, you can press different buttons to lob or spike. Yeah, as well. it's really so cool you because the timing. you need to. Get your timing down to the normal, the normal. Yeah, but volleys. suddenly you hear like. Whoop, but then if like you hear lob. different yeah. sound effects, you have to re- have the mental acuity to change up the timing. And believe me, it's, if, if you're watching, you're like duh. But when you're playing, yeah. it is not easy. Yeah. It's it's very easy to just get into a rhythm and, and I, like all of a sudden it'll be like you hit the net or too slow or something. It's like whoa. And I think that it's it's really cool. Like one of the other games on there is basically Hot Potato. Yeah. But basically, you're 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 only using one of the Joy Cons and you're shaking it like you. It's a soda shaker. Yeah. So you're shaking a bottle of soda, but it's not just that. But it's like Hot Potato would be a more control because in Hot Potato, from what I remember, it's either a song that keeps playing and so like, yeah, there's a time, time limit, yeah. or there's ones where there's a random number of button presses you can do, and you mm-hmm. every time you yeah, pass it, they have yeah. to press the button. So it's just kind of just random there. But in the soda shaker, it is random. But at the same time, you can affect how long it is because you're shaking it as much as you want and the controller vibrates more and more and more as you shake it more. So when you're shaking it a lot, you're, you have to pay attention to the other people to see how yeah. they feel when they're shaking it if they think it's going to pop soon. Yeah, because like that, that's the thing. Instead of there being a time limit, it's how much the thing is shaken. And there is a threshold for that, but nobody knows what it is. Mm-hmm. So you could be the one to ruin it all. You know, It's, it's really exciting that way. I really liked, um, probably my favorite one's the fake draw. Same. Mm. Yeah, Same. I, I love that one. Because, um, so there's there's like a, like a, a draw and fire mini, uh, mini game. Just, you know, kind of stra- like... Straight out of Mario Party 2's duel. Or Wild Gunman. Uh, like, you know, yeah, on dog. the NES. <laughs> I would not have known that. Oh, did you ever see Back to the Future 2? Oh, that's what that was. Okay. okay. That's like a baby's toy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Use your hands. It's actually not a real version of the game. They actually, Yeah, they yeah. arcadified it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, just to g- give you an idea. But yeah, actually, Nintendo made a mechanical arcade amusement that was that originally. Oh, that's so it was cool. even older than that. But it, 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 it's, you know, it's a it's a draw and fire game. Um, you know, you, you, they say fire and you, you draw your weapon and you shoot. Yeah, and you don't know when they're going to say fire. It's and like it, three, it's, two, one, ready. Like, ah, when's he going to say fire? Go! And, and the other know. cool thing about it is it does measure your, the, your angle. And how quickly you fire. So yeah, if I, you I fire got, fast, but you're shooting the ground, then you yeah, still Yeah, I once got the quick draw, but I didn't fire when the gun was fully up. So mm-hmm. I fired first, but it didn't matter. It, like, the game actually said, you hit the dirt. And I'm like, aww. <laughs> yeah, so, like, there's, there's like, a straight-up version of the game where you just wait for them to say, fire... But then there's like fake draw, which they 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 say a bunch of different words, and most of them sound like fire yeah, or flower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they fountain. Start with, yeah. The worst one was five, though. That's yeah. Like, that's uh, two on the nose because yeah. the way because they kind of do the little accent like fire, so it's like five. Too yeah. Late. Yeah. But yeah, you'll have like flower, and you're like, ha ah. ha. So like you have to not only keep your hands down, but also not pull the trigger. Because mm-hmm. I once was able to restrain my arm 
but I fired anyway, like, just straight down. <laughs> so I was only able to control one of my muscles. Yeah, um, the, the cow milking game is a, is a yeah. blast to watch yeah, people play. Wacky, yeah. 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 It's just, like, they're, they're actually really fun. And, again, the videos, tutorials they show you are really cool to see. Uh, there's so right? much and they're very campy they're pretty and stylish in a way too. Yeah, but yeah, they're campy, yeah. but in the right way. Yeah, like they're the campy people, in the right the people way. People really yeah. overact it. They're like, they're they're going like, ah, oh, that they're having uh, like, they're having as much fun as people in infomercials have for mundane yes. things. Like they're having the most fun you could have. Like, I get that this is a game, but seriously, guys, relax. Like, it's that kind of acting, mm-hmm. and I love it because it's so cheesy on purpose. But yeah, it's a, it's a great game, and I kind of want to play more because we haven't played all the games. Yeah. And I know it was really me and Lotus playing most of the games, but I kind of want to try all of them out with maybe a bigger party and just passing the controller yeah. around. And, and speaking of which, with the bigger party, they also have team play, where you could still only play with two people at a time, but you could trade off as you go, and... Uh, the win like whichever the, the person on the team who won gets to spin a wheel and get um a one through five and move that many spaces on a board and whatever space you land on is the next mini game you play until you get to the goal or if they roll a skull then the other team gets a chance to spin so it's a rather exciting board game yeah i i enjoyed it i mean i i had a blast playing it with just the uh you know the four of us and uh it it was it was a lot of fun. I, I don't regret my purchase one bit. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm definitely going to play it again when the, the next group of people comes it, it over. Is a, it is a perfect party yeah. game. Yeah, and it, it explains the conceit immediately. Anybody can play it and we'll have fun with it. Um, you know, it's 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 one of those things where a, a lot of it's motion and, like, yeah. uh, completely understandable. Like, every all the concepts are, like, natural concepts. Mm-hmm. Um, the yeah. only one that didn't really work was the shaving game. Uh, we yeah. Had for you than yeah, yeah, so there's one where you have to shave. Basically, you, you have a, a fake beard and yeah. you have to make sure you shave your whole Cover face. Your but whole it starts thing. off where you have to basically sync up the controller. You have to put it against the bottom of your chin, press a button, wait for it to register... But even with that, yeah, I just couldn't. I was shaving work. like to get the to shave. I sometimes had to go above my nose. Yeah, you looked where a little my wonky. My beard wasn't and... actually always, but it's just the other. The cool thing about it though is even though it was wonky, it also could be because they assume how tall someone's face is. Yeah, maybe. But uh, it's cool because the um, the controller vibrates when you get hair. So yeah. even if you, so if you cover a clean even area, if you, you are shaving the like the back of your head or the top of your head because it's not synced up, you can still wait for it to vibrate so you know if you're getting something. Yeah, I, I was I was like I don't know I couldn't get the syncing thing to work almost at all for me, so it was just totally wonky. But it was still amusing to watch. Yeah, well you know you know it's just one of those games where they ask you why the long face. <laughs> but anyway uh, <laughs> yeah so that's great and i i do if you ever have people around like definitely pick it up and when oh, i get yeah. a switch I, i'll probably pick it up because honestly i would like to practice some of the games so i become beast at it <laughs> i think the um the major criticism that we we um we probably have of it is uh it, it's not very tasty oh yes that's so right. um there have been I, I, they're definitely not rumors anymore, but there are people have been telling, saying that the, the games actually taste bad, and the reason why is because... Well, to prevent little kids. Prevent little kids yeah. from eating it. So I, being the idiot that I am, said, you know what, I'll taste it, I'll see what it's like, and I proceeded to put the whole thing in my mouth. He straight up put the whole cartridge yes. in his mouth. I didn't lick I it. Licking is not he enough ate for me. the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> and it tastes bad. I, I'm, I, I've been trying to think about what it tastes like. Like burnt plastic? And it's... Like a bad, really I don't, bitter, like, like, like a Nintendo really Switch bitter, cartridge. yeah. Like it tastes like a really bad Switch cartridge. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly it. But it's like a bitter, yeah, bitter plasticky. I don't know what. Okay. Uh, what if we marinated it overnight? That might actually improve the flavor. Uh, okay. Yeah, but there's still no nutrition, so I wouldn't actually. Yeah, eat not it. worth it. Yeah, zero but out of ten I, would not eat. But it's one of those things where people say that it tastes bad, and you're all like, ah, no, it doesn't. So you're like, I'll try it. I'll taste it. Out. Uh, and then I, I taste hear it, it like tastes like straight up garbage. And, like, and it's I would awful. say, <laughs> as someone who's actually gone through it, just believe me, don't do it. Especially don't put the whole thing in your mouth because I it, it lingered for longer than I expected to. That yeah, sucks. yeah. I saw you like reaching for a drink just to like clear your mouth. Yeah, of it. nobody's yeah. talked about the Nintendo Switch cartridges uh, aftertaste. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, um, uh, great uh, mini game. We also played uh, Saturn Bomberman or uh, Super Saturn- Bomber Switch Bomberman. <laughs> Switch Bomberman. Super Bomberman R, uh, which I I enjoyed thoroughly. I, I um, so. Uh, I wanted to hear Pyro's thought on it. I mean, we, we did play uh, a cu- only a couple rounds, but you're the big Bomberman fan here. Yeah, I, I don't want to say I'm an expert at Bomberman, but I love it. I've 
think I've beaten all the Super Nintendo ones. I almost beat 64, but I think I rented it and I had to give it back. I didn't like Hero that much, but I think I managed to beat the first one. Um, he almost beat the Saturn one when we were at mm-hmm. Bagfest one time. Thinking about it That's now, I kind of want to buy one. Bomberman 64 because I love that one. That one's it's good. A, it's a very good... If, if, it's I kind of want to go home. It's a lot slower um, with the picking up and the blowing up the bombs, but it's a very good game in a different way. I just realized that could be the game I play until Persona comes out or the Bomberman. There you game. go. Keep, keep in mind, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but like beating the game... You can do that, but there's like a true ending if you get all the gold cards. I'm and talking more about the Super the Nintendo ass. ones, which oh, are okay. less. But um, so I really would look forward to playing the single player because that I think is what I enjoy the most out of the Bomberman games. But the multiplayer is just it's Bomberman. I know that yeah, it's uh, fun. Vice, you mentioned that there's a sc- like a screen tilting or whatever. Yeah, so I I, I kind of spared you guys from that because um, in the in the global. Uh, settings you can actually put it on like a fixed camera or a floating camera and the floating camera like is really distracting i I wasn't a big fan of it it's supposed to follow the action and kind of like zoom in but like for me i I like a full top-down perspective to To see see what's going going on on. yeah and by the way i want to throw one more thing in there um this game has voice acting from each of the bomberman and because like each bomberman has a distinct personality and you could tell visually and by the voices and i actually think that's really cool because i don't know if they've they do. They're, well, Have they done that before? In the... Well, backstory, from what I remember, at least. Bomberman... Uh, for Super Nintendo, at least. Bomberman 1, I think it was just white and black. Yeah. And then the next one they added... The pink one, I think. Maybe the pink one. And then eventually they had more of them. But also there was a anime, Bomberman oh, that's right. Jeters, yeah. that had all of them. And there was actually... They actually all had persona- like, actual personalities. Well, they would have to in the show, I would Yeah, whereas them. I think in... The first time they had them, they were just different colors. Yeah, the they game didn't really have color. personalities yet. But they started to get that as they sure. had them. So they yeah, have been in there for a while. Because, yeah, in the, in the Switch game, they all clearly have distinctive personalities. They're not talking throughout the match or anything, but when they win, it's like, yeah, I got them, or, like, depending on their attitude, because they have different attitudes. The only time you do hear their voices during the match, though, is um, if you have the revenge card on, then you might have seen this in other Bomberman games. When you die, you get relegated to the perimeter of the level and you could fire bombs from a cannon in. You could, you could turn that feature on and off too. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going nice. to mention because like may, maybe other people will like it, but at least for me, it got tiring really quickly because like I, I actually like hearing each Bomberman when they win a round saying a little victory quote or whatever or when you select them, like, yeah, I'm the one who chose. Well, let's do this. But I like the, that. Yeah, I do <laughs> like that. But like, but during the match, when you're doing the revenge thing, whenever you fire a bomb, it's like take this, take this, and like it just it gets so irritating. At least mm. for me, um, I didn't mind. Other it, people but might, yeah, yeah, other people really might not mind it. But for me, it's just like I think I'm more annoyed is... about the revenge thing because it kind of um, we could turn that off too. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's fun. Expe- so when I'm not in competitive mode, I'll I'll think it's fine because oh, yeah. you got me. It's but then when I start getting competitive, I'm like, God damn it, I was about to win and you totally yeah, fucked this up for back. me. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, like like um Vice said, you can turn the voices off if you so desire. So like you, you can have a more old school Bomberman, just you play the game, you know, experience. But in terms of the uh, the comparison to other it's it's a multiplayer Bomberman game. I we didn't yeah, get a chance to play eight player, but it was basically the same thing. I mean there there were it looked like uh, eight different stages and they all I have right, different yeah. Um, I think you could themes. unlock more too. Yeah, you, okay. you could unlock a ton of accessories to swag yeah. them up. Because I, I noticed when you select your color, you can then choose your look. Yeah, it says yeah. the usual versus yeah. whatever you've customized. Bomberman sixty four did that, by mm-hmm. the way, in costume pieces. Um, so yeah, by, by the way, just yeah, even though we just said it, let me just really drill that into your head here. Eight player Bomberman, like that's really great, especially yeah. because this is no longer the age of old consoles where you need to buy like two multi taps or something. Like here, um, the, the Joy Cons are pretty convenient, and with their own existence. A joy a controller is three controllers if you split it up. So you all like at the minimum when you buy a switch, you can do three player Bomberman, which is well, more than anyone else's. I do have done. a pro controller, so that I, I did have to buy separately. Okay, but you automatically have two no matter mm-hmm. what. Two at the very least. Mm-hmm. So that that is really convenient. It's not so bad to get. And the thing is, what's great about any system, I think, since like the PS3, 360, and Wii, is that it's wireless now, so you don't need to hook all these controllers up. Um, you know, I think the, 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 the most players you could ever have is Saturn Bomberman 10, 
but the 360 Bomberman, I think, supported six. So it's really cool to see that we're back up to eight. Like, that's just, that's well, really cool. I remember there was a PC one that I played that supported, like, 16, and that oh. was, like, a big thing about it. But was that a fan game, or was that for real? No, it was a real one, but I think it was just multiplayer. Okay, so that's, was, yeah, oh, that's, that's Mega exactly. Bomberman. Yeah, or something that's like awesome. That. Yeah. I used to play it when I was. Well, you got me there. Like, that's amazing. High school, I think. Yeah, that one. I, I don't even like the art style. No, that it was. It wasn't that great. Yeah. Oh, so the, the the one thing that I do, I don't. I don't want to say complaint about Bomberman are that I like Superman because of the whole two D sprites and they they are three D. At least it's not Bomberman Zero three D, but no. it is three D, which is it adds something, but at the same time, it doesn't feel this exactly the same. But again. Multiplayer has the different stages with the different themes and different like tricks oh, to them. And, and... and by the way, speaking of which, one thing I should shout out is because it was such, I think, a drain on the system's um, capability, Saturn Bomberman, you could do up to 10 players, but only one stage yeah. supported all 10. With the Switch, presum- we haven't tested it, but presumably you could play yeah. eight players anywhere, which is fantastic because if you were, if you ever wanted to do a gimmick stage on the saturn you'd have to take it down to like eight or six people or something not only that but uh the power-ups are limited in the te- in the 10 player version one as oh, well okay so so it's it's not as great as it sounds yeah you you get to say that you've done it i play yeah. with 10 players you know <laughs> yeah it, it's not as great as it sounds and and it's really really small uh like, it is yeah everyone yeah. is shrunk because the stage has to be proportionally big enough to hold <laughs> yeah, everybody because yeah. if if the stage looked the way it did on Four player Bomberman, like everybody would be like pushed off the screen. It wouldn't make sense. I'm, can you? I'm wondering if we can. It, the stages felt small to me too, a little kind bit. Of. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you can change that, or if that's just oh, like that virtual fighter, you just increase yeah. the stage. So, so that'd be great. So I think the way that it works is that we were playing the four player stage, and the four player stage is actually arranged kind of like a, a like a standard definition television. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think the eight player stages are like widescreen stages. Oh, I'm clever. wondering if you could then do an eight player stage with only four people, because I kind of would oh. feel wonder how that would be like having fewer players. With, I mean, I guess in a way it takes it's longer good. to get to each that's, other. It's good because thing, yeah. you'd have like, more power. I was thinking just be, about that. Yeah, when we were no, no one would be fighting each other. You'd just be spending the first like a minute. That the way the way over. the maps are set up is it means you're gonna very very quickly you're gonna get to someone else and have to deal with their bombs. Yeah. So yeah. So um, one of the things that I think is also cool about this is you guys know like I, I like to bring um, video game systems and, and things like that to MAGFest and, mm. and, and conventions. I would rather bring uh, – as much as I like bringing uh, – I, I do like bringing the Saturn because there's a lot of like cool – like goofy things to play mm-hmm. there. I mean, like we play Battle Monsters almost every single time, and also uh, Street Fighter, Battle the movie, Monsters. the game. We, we we play that a lot, uh, but, but we also play Saturn Bomberman. I like bringing that, but this is even like way more convenient. The, yeah, the Switch convenient. is and the so Switch much is more. Small. The, yeah. Switch, the Switch is Very tiny, portable. but yeah, it's so much more party friendly. Like this, yeah, the Saturn. You play one yes, two Switch. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> like the Saturn has multiplayer games because every system has multiplayer games, but the Switch really seems to. Push that angle. Imagine that we're at Magfest playing one two switch and just people leave the door open. People can come in and oh, join, join yeah. in. So one one of the things I also want to mention is uh, you know I have uh, effectively three controllers for this um, for this game already. Now most uh, systems that are going to have multiplayer games on it, I'm going to want to have what four controllers mm-hmm. at least, right? For 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 couch games, you know, so we could play like Mario Kart, for instance. Uh, so what's great about this is I can have the pro controller. And the two Joy Cons that came with the system, but I can also do uh, two more Joy Cons, and that counts as another full controller too. If mm-hmm. I get the shell, and also uh, another two Joy Cons, uh, and so that is what is that? That's seven controllers. That that is six. seven controllers yeah. uh, already. It and I can also have four full controllers mm-hmm. as well. So uh, I have like, you know, seven, um, I have six mini controllers and one big controller, or I can have four big controllers. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really awesome thing uh, because, you know, I can, I can easily do eight player uh, or four player games with that many controllers. Yeah. It's really, really neat. Yeah. I'm wondering what other games are going to use that because a lot of other multiplayer games are usually two to four. It's true. So I'm wondering how many other games are going to let you go up to eight or so. Yeah. I think there will be... At least more, um, which will, which At will be good. Yeah, I, I will yeah, say, so, <laughs> well, no, you know, I, 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 I'm sure it won't be the only game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like in the Switch's defense, like the Wii U didn't get too terribly much third party support because that technology was insane, and they're mm. better off working with what they. I think knew. the install base, base is almost already yeah with, matching with, the Wii U. That, that's the thing, but like with the Switch, it's like they're just controllers. It's, it's not this crazy tablet shenanigans. Like there are, I mean, I think the Switch does have a tablet controller, but like. 
you don't need a tablet to play games. Yeah, there is, is evidenced touch, by us today. There yeah. are touch controls with the with the Switch. Yeah, there are, but like, but you you can you can do crazy multiplayer Joy-Con stuff with just look here. It's it's a control stick and buttons go. Mm-hmm. You know, like so. I think it'll be a lot more developer friendly as well. Yeah, and I I did want to mention here. Uh, so I uh, I know that there's some some criticisms going on uh, about you know this version of Bomberman, and I I. I Maybe it's maybe it's the one player mode because I haven't played the one player mode at all. But in terms of multiplayer, I thought it was a really nice return to form. I, mm-hmm. I, I thought it was a a, a perfectly competent uh, version of, of Bomberman, and I I played quite a few different versions of Bomberman, and uh, I I liked it. I, and uh, again, I I want to reiterate, uh, you know, from a couple back, weeks back, it. The platform that it's on and the convenience of the platform means something. Yeah, uh, it's part of the experience of playing the game. So I, I don't have to get out ten uh, controllers with wires and multi taps. You know. Yeah, that, um, that's the thing with Saturn. You needed for for ten players, you needed two multi taps, six controllers in one, four in the other, and, and a, a hundred twenty dollar video game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's true. Actually, I, picked worth up, that I was able to pick up the Japanese one at digital press for like thirteen dollars. Good. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that for me. I'm going to reserve some judgment until I play single player, but from what I've played, it's it's a multiplayer it's Bomberman yeah. game so far. And I mean, that's, like, that's the thing. Like, what people what, expect. What, but, but yeah, based, as far as multiplayer Bomberman is concerned, it's not really a matter of, oh, this multiplayer Bomberman is so much better than the other. Like, really, all you have to do is just not screw it up. Just do do Bomberman the way this game's aesthetic works, and like, okay. You know. So uh, the uh, final game that we, we played was Snipper Clips. And I that was interesting. I really liked Snipper Clips because it was a really great co-op game, um, and you, you you have to. It, it's a bunch of mini games. It's another collection of mini games, but it was twenty bucks. Slash puzzles. Yeah, yeah, and it, it was fun. It has a lot of uh, uh, a lot of um, personality. Uh, I enjoyed playing it, and uh, didn't didn't play all the uh, all the different scenarios or anything like that but you played a good bunch like six mm-hmm. out of like I, I think it's 12 or 15 or something I think it's cool in the same way like I never really stuck with scribble knots but I really think it's cool like that because a puzzle game where you're trying to solve it could be either making shapes or getting like a ball into yeah, a instead basket. of instead of some things you alter your own structure yeah and it's really cool because there are different ways you could solve the puzzle. I think a lot mm-hmm. of the ways they expect you to solve the puzzle is clipping each other, and that's one of the big things about the game. But uh, when we were playing this game, a lot of the puzzles were solved without any clipping done because we were yeah, multiplayer, too like, lazy or whatever. Yeah, just like shifting that. perspective, like manipulation or whatever. Or not perspective, but rotation manipulation. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Once again, I, I love Nintendo's uh, mini game compilations. Uh, one of my favorite ones uh, of recent has been a Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. I think that came out like three or four years ago at this point, but uh, I really like that one, uh, and I like all the WarioWare games and all that stuff. I'm Those glad, are fun as hell to watch. I'm, I'm glad that they're they're continuing to go on with it and also you know give you a, a really good reason to use the Joy-Cons as two different controllers like mm-hmm. that, that yeah. that's that, that's what's so cool about this you automatically ha- have two controllers with like, you no matter where you go that was one thing i i have to admit i doubted when the switch was coming out like the joy the controller gets split into two controllers and like they're these tiny little slivers i'm like really but no it, it makes sense and they are usable for sure yeah, yeah. So I, I think um, uh, unless anybody else has uh, any more comments, I, I think this has this been a, a pretty great overview Just of the, the one, Switch. Just one super last thing. Um, other than the game Contradiction on Steam, it's just really cool to see, regarding 1-2-Switch, yeah. actual FMV you know, mm. back on a on like a, on like an actual like mainstream cheesy, console. Cheesy live action footage. Yeah, usually when yeah. I picture FMV action, I think of like the goofy schlock you see on the Sega CD. So, like, I gotta tell Mad you... Mad Dog McCree. Mad Dog McCree. I, I gotta say, it's really weird seeing, like, really crisp, clean HD graphics on widescreen, like, FMV. 
uh, and just, and whoa. pumping out of a uh, at a out of a cartridge that tastes really bad. <laughs> yeah, this tiny little. <laughs> now I haven't tasted Bomberman R. That might sway my purchase. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's just all I wanted to say. FMV is. I mean, I don't know if like FMV is back, but here's an example where FMV is back. It's kind of cool. So yeah, we. we uh, I finally got the full experience out of my system, and I, I wasn't disappointed by any of my purchases. I still have Isaac to play. I haven't played Binding of Isaac yet on it, but I, I assume it's it's just as good as it always is. Is. but uh, i can't wait to play uh play it a little bit and talk about it on tuesday next week so um that's all, all we have uh for this week uh remember to subscribe to corrective consciousness's uh youtube and soundcloud pages uh while there please give us thumbs up likes and five star ratings on itunes it helps us promote and spread awareness of the show and any bit of encouragement keeps us uh keeps the show going and you can also catch us on tuesday on our sister podcast corrective consciousness the podcast about our lives and pop culture finally you can friend me as vise the bold v-y-s-e-t-h-e-b-o-l-d on steam psn xbox live and twitter <laughs> and you can uh, hit me up at lotus prince on uh, the youtube channel and at lotus prince all one word on twitter i'm not on twitter but you can look for me as Pyro Jack Frost or usually Cloud 08540. What would it take to get you on Twitter? You guys stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Would you put out any tweets? Yeah, I was actually gonna say the way the, I was actually gonna say Pyro the way you said Twitter. It really sounded like I'm so done with this joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not on Twitter. Uh, like, Twitter. <laughs> All right. Until guys. next time, everyone. <laughs> we'll we'll catch you on Tuesday. Bye, everyone.